Heavenly Father, we exalt you above every thought, above every circumstance or situation that would come against us. We exalt the name of Jesus. It is at the name of Jesus that every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Every knee will bow before him and distinguish that he is above all. So, Lord, we exalt you now. We exalt you in this moment of our lives. We exalt you in this first Sunday of the new year. Be exalted in every area of our lives. In Christ's name, amen and amen. You may be seated in his presence. Today, I don't know if I'm going to necessarily preach as much as I just kind of want to share a little bit. Um, I want to share with you our theme for this year. Um, so I'm not going to try to take up a whole lot of time, but I just want to share a couple things. No, you know, I told you all that I shared with somebody. I was, you know, you sometimes you're in prayer, and and I, I was I was sharing with a friend of mine who don't they don't go here, and I was talking about, you know, the kingdom and all. He says, "Well, you can't just stop kingdom." First off, I'm just doing what God told me. I felt, you know, I mean, wasn't my idea, but I was like, "Yeah, you're right." You know, you you can't just. I mean, it's kind of abrupt just to stop kingdom after pursuing the kingdom agenda. And we just say, boom, no more kingdom. So I, I understand what he was saying. So I, my message today is going to be the theme also. So if you write down the title of the message, you'll also have the theme for this year. So we're going to remove this so you won't, uh, not that it's, bad or old or uh, outdated or whatever I just want to give you something let, let me let me before we even do that I want to remind you of something the theme in 2018 what was it very good so see how you're able to remember back to that so God was moving us forward and he moved us forward to No, you, you, you saying it, but you're not hearing what you're saying. He moved us forward to pursuing the kingdom agenda. Did you get that? Now, okay, this is only in hindsight, y'all. We didn't know this going into this. So notice what he did. He moved us forward to pursuing the kingdom agenda. You got that? The theme this year is embracing the kingdom movement. <laughs> embracing the kingdom movement. I felt the Holy Spirit share with me, the kingdom is a movement. Now, we, we black lives matter. We said that was a movement. Apartheid, that was a movement. Civil rights, that was a movement. I think we might want to know what a movement is, though. Because the kingdom is a movement. And when we understand that, I think it gives us a better perspective. Now, the theme is what? Embracing the kingdom movement. Okay. Embracing the kingdom movement. So now, I took a little time. So I know you all are very studious. And I wanted to look at this because I like to see, okay, Lord, what are you saying? What, as we look at this for 2020, embracing the kingdom movement, what are you saying? Well, the word embrace means to accept something or someone readily or gladly. To uh, accept something or someone readily or gladly. 
And I had to think, and I said, well, you know, because sometimes you could talk about the kingdom, but people ain't embracing it. They're not accepting it readily or gladly. So to accept something or someone readily or gladly is to embrace it. But movement, what, what is a movement? Everybody seemingly has their own movement. What's, what is a movement? It's an organized effort to promote or attain an end. It's an organized effort to promote or attain an end. So if we're embracing the kingdom movement, what does all of this mean when we put it together? What is God saying to redeeming love? I believe it sounds something like this. It's for us to readily or gladly accept the organized effort to promote or attain the kingdom of God. I believe it's for us to readily or gladly accept. See, there's an acceptance of this. And I, I think we can't keep getting away from that. This is not just keep, pre well, you know, uh, yeah, it was, we're going to talk about the kingdom. Have you accepted this? I mean, as a way of life. Is it, is it gladly or is it something drudgingly for you? So, to readily or gladly accept the organized effort. You know God has an organized way of what he's doing, even if you don't understand the organization. So you see Joan, who talks to one person, shares Christ with her, and this person, not unbeknownst to her, is going to share something with her that's going to lead to them paying off their house. See, there's an organized effort, whether you know it or not, and the organized effort is to promote or attain the kingdom of God. Some say, what do you mean to promote or attain? Okay, our life should always be promoting the kingdom. Always. Don't be a part of something that you can't promote. Why be a part of it if you don't want to promote it? Now, it may be pieces of things that I'm in that I'm not as happy about as others, but at least I can say I'm a part of it, and I'm not ashamed of that part. So we should be able to promote the kingdom if we're part of it. You know, somebody said, if you pray for rain, take an umbrella. If you pray for rain, take an umbrella. Now, if we're going to talk about embracing the kingdom movement, our lives should reflect that we're under the umbrella of the kingdom. I shouldn't be doing stuff that's contrary to the kingdom of God if I'm going to talk about being in the kingdom. All right, let's get to the scripture here then. So if we're talking about embracing the kingdom movement, I want to share something with you. Very simple, the kingdom of God is coming. L let me show you where I'm coming from because you need a theme scripture. Matthew chapter 6, Miss Jackie, verse 10. She need a theme scripture. I understand. This is our theme scripture. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Isn't, just for a moment, I, I want you to realize something. The disciples who had been with Jesus and walked with him and had seen his life. And, and, and Perry, there came a moment, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. So now, so Jesus says, okay, Pray after this manner. Our Father, come on, y'all, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Wait, 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 wait. Notice you started with the Father being holy. 
So Jesus' first priority was to make us know that the Father is holy. After establishing that you know the Father is holy, you start talking about his kingdom. And you start talking about not just his kingdom, watch this, not just up there. He starts to let you know even in the prayer, in your manner of prayer, his kingdom is coming. He starts to put it in your heart and your mind that the kingdom of God is coming. And, and, and here's the thing. Thy will be done in earth as it is. He says God is going to change what's happening here. Oftentimes, Minister Plummer, when we pray, we don't pray understanding that the prayer should be under the auspices of the kingdom coming. Generally, we're concerned about what we're dealing with far more so than the kingdom coming. But notice when Jesus is teaching disciples how to pray, it is with the understanding that the kingdom is coming. You may be going through something right now, but I want you to know the kingdom is coming. It may not look real good to you right now. It may not feel real good, but the kingdom is coming. And I think that that's one of the things that we've got to begin to look at this year. It's back to recognizing that as we embrace the kingdom movement, as our world gets crazier and crazier, we're embracing the kingdom movement because the kingdom is coming. Now, I know, well, you know, well, Pastor, what do you mean when the kingdom is coming? Oh, is that the rapture? Is that, y'all, this is, we, we keep thinking about events. Okay, don't get me wrong. The rapture is an event. That does, see, that's not the kingdom. That's an event that takes place because of the kingdom. See, I, 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 I'm trying to get my perspective right, Minister Plummer. I'm trying to really understand things now. The early disciples had something that we seemingly, we, we just, oh, the tip of the iceberg on. Jesus said, the, the, listen, thy kingdom come. Watch this. Already see, I ain't going to finish. Already see that now. Y'all already see. See, our world right now seems to be spiraling out of control. Each day stuff is happening. We're hearing weird reports. I was uh, reading on this morning, I think it was, uh, in the wee hours of the morning, I was reading an article. A man on December 29th, I think this was in Virginia or something. You're talking about our world spiraling out of control. They had a family dinner, family get together, I guess for the New Year's, and had some family members over at the house, and the father was asleep. Everybody sleep in the house, nighttime, like you're supposed to be. But you got guests that you've invited, you know, family members and stuff. Somewhere in the night, the father wakes up. He goes, Miss Leslie, to check in on his kids. He has a two-year-old and a three-year-old. He goes into the room, and he sees a man standing in the room, and he's naked from the waist down with the two-year-old and the three-year-old. He asked the man, no, y'all stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. He asked the man, what are you doing here? The man wouldn't answer him. He shut the door and locked it with his two-year-old and his three-year-old in there. The father kicks the door in and commences to beating the man into a conniption. You hear me? When you, they got a picture of the man's face. It look, he, when I say he beat him, he beat him. When the police showed up, he was, he was getting his gun to go after the man. So he was going to finish the job. 
But (laughs) what I want you to hear is it was a family member. It's somebody you invited into the home. This wasn't nobody that broke in. This is somebody you invite because our world is spiraling out of control. People that you used to think you can trust, you can't trust no more. People that you thought wouldn't ever do something like that. After all, see, we always think it's somebody else out there. This was a family member. And he almost was no longer part of the family if the guy would have been able to finish all that he had started. But to see that things like this have evolved, it's indicative of the world we live in. But listen, the kingdom is coming. Even with that kind of foolishness, Perry, the kingdom is still coming. Even with people doing crazy things like this in the course of of life, the kingdom is still coming. Now, I looked at this. I was thinking about this, Minister Plummer. Not only is our world spiraling out of control with, with personal things like that, but I thought about, look at us as, na- as the nations. Jesus says there will be wars and rumors of wars. I said, okay. I-, I was thinking about China. So right now, Hong Kong doesn't like what China is trying to do because China is trying to take over Hong Kong and rule it as a communist uh, part of the, 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 the uh, nation. So you got people to look and see a policeman actually take a, 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 a revolver pointed at a person close range and pull the trigger on national television. Don't you think things are spiraling out of control? All because they're protesting? That you take out your revolver and actually on national television try to execute the person. And I said, well, I, I was thinking about North Korea who makes a promise that we're going to have a, a Christmas present. People are making threats. All of, See, Jesus says wars and rumors of wars. I look at us as America. If you, don't, if you didn't catch the news, we just killed a top official in Iran. Oh, you said, well, we, listen, I, I, whether, I don't know your political party, what you think, this, that, or the other. No, 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 I'm talking about what happened. It's done now. I, I don't care what you want to say, it's done. And, 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 you know, two other presidents knew about it and didn't do nothing. So a whole lot of folk died between then and now. And some of them was from this country. So, like I said, I don't know what your political party is, but I'm just saying that's the truth. And I'm saying all of these things are stirring up. But listen, the kingdom is coming. And what I'm saying to you, these things are not hindering the kingdom. They are evidence that it's coming. So, are we going to embrace this or are we resisting this? All of these signs, hang on, Donald, I got you. All of these signs of the things that saying the kingdom is coming. But yet people are walking around in a drunken stupor, oblivious to what's really going on, caught up in their own agenda, missing the movement. See, I look at, see, everybody wasn't part of apartheid. Everybody wasn't part of the civil rights movement. And everybody's not going to be part of the kingdom movement. I just want you to get what I'm saying here. Let, let me, let me, I know we need a little scripture. Let me, let me show you a little something. Just take a little walk with me. Go to Daniel chapter 2, verse 31. New Living Translation, Daniel chapter 2, verse 31. Now, before we, before we in really jump into this, uh, I know you may say, well, we're going to Daniel. That's Old Testament. That's this, that, and the other. Can, can for a moment we step out of the Testaments? I would really prefer, instead of looking at the Testaments, let's look at the timeline. You know, let, let, let's look at, uh, uh, we have a beginning timeline and we have an end on our timeline. 
But now what we're going to do is take a helicopter view of it. We're going to get up real high and look down at the timeline. That's what's happening in Daniel. Because to God has found a man. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm about to say. God has found a man in Daniel that he could talk to about kingdom, not about time. And see, people read the book the wrong way because they're not thinking kingdom, they're thinking time. So God has found this man that he could talk to about kingdom. So let's get the conversation that's going on here. Now, first off, the Bible says in, in chapter, I want chapter 31, I mean chapter 2 and verse 31 for sake of time. Uh, Daniel is talking to the king of that time. Did you get it? The king of that time. Now, so we can have the context, Minister Plummer, you have to understand it would be like talking to our president now. And you would talk to him about what's happening right now and what's going to happen after his term is over. Now, so to that particular king, it's very relevant because you're talking to him about his reign. But God doesn't stop there because, remember, it's the timeline. And in this timeline, the interesting thing is all God uses is kingdoms. See, you can make up a timeline of all kind of different things. We can say, well, you know what? Uh, every 30 years, we're going to do this on this mark. And every next 30 years, this right here. But God said, no, no, this timeline is just kingdoms. Each point is a kingdom. So I'm, I'm, you, you know how to give you the key to the map so you understand what the map saying. So I'm trying to give you the key to the map so we can understand when we read this. So now the kingdoms are the points on the timeline. We good now? Okay, now, now let's read, see if we get an understanding. So J Daniel chapter 2, verse 31. He says, in your vision, your majesty, you saw standing before you a huge shining statue of a man. It was a frightening sight. So what, what you have to understand, what Daniel's got to do is the king said, listen, I had a dream. But here's the deal. I don't know what the dream was. I know I had one. All you astrologers and sorcerers, y'all come here and tell me what this means. I want you to come here and tell me what my dream was and then tell me what it means. And they said, okay, no problem. Tell us what it was and we'll tell you what it means. He said, no, tell me what it was and tell me what it means. I want you to see the dilemma here. So the only person they could find in the entire kingdom is Daniel. So Daniel says, okay, well, this, 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 this is the dream. He said, in your vision, your majesty, you saw standing before you a huge, shining statue of a man. It was a frightening sight. Verse 32, the head of the statue was made of fine gold. Its chest and arms were silver. Its belly and thighs were bronze. Its legs were iron, and its feet were a combination of iron and baked clay. Verse 34, as you watched, a rock was cut from a mountain but not by human hands. It struck the feet of iron and clay, smashing them to bits. The whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold. Then the wind blew them away without a trace, like a chaff on a threshing floor. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. Daniel said, that was the dream. Now we're going to tell you what it means. That was a bad man. I mean, you, you got to understand, the king's still speechless. You know, one of the things that I'm, I'm learning, though, when God is using you, you don't have to fear nothing. You ain't, now, you don't have to be arrogant and all of that, 
But this, he's standing before the king. He said, that's your dream. He wasn't, uh, well, um, um, well I, I, I think, um, um, he said, that was your dream. He said, now let me tell you what it means. Verse 37, your majesty, you are the greatest of kings. So the God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, strength, and honor. And all what Daniel is saying is absolutely true. He has made you the ruler over all the inhabited world and has put even the wild animals and birds under your control. You are the head of gold. Now, I could really delve into that, even the wild animals and birds, because that ain't, I don't believe that's just them being tamed. He was ruling even the animals. He said, you are the head of gold. Verse 39, but after your kingdom, now look at the relevance now. The spot on the timeline now is his kingdom. But after your kingdom comes to an end, another kingdom that's inferior to yours will rise to take your place. So we know that's one kingdom. Another one's going to rise, right, to take that place. After that kingdom has fallen, yet a third kingdom. So now here's another spot on the line. And notice each spot is a kingdom. Yet a third kingdom represented by bronze will rise to rule the world. I want you to understand. Well, that was what they was doing over there now. They are ruling the entire known world. Now, Verse 40, following that kingdom, there will be a fourth one, as strong as iron. That kingdom will smash and crush all previous empires, just as iron smashes and crushes everything it strikes. The feet and toes you saw were a combination of iron and baked clay, showing that this kingdom will be divided. Like iron mixed with clay, it will have some of the strength of iron. Boy, boy. Okay, no, I'm not, not right now. Not right now. Verse 42. But while some parts of it will be as strong as iron, other parts will be as weak as clay. This mixture of iron and clay also shows that these kingdoms, okay, these kingdoms, notice now you had one, two, three, four. Now it's multiple ones. Sounds like just saying. So it ain't one kingdom ruling everything now. It's multiple ones. This mixture of iron and clay also shows that these kingdoms will try to strengthen themselves by forming alliances. So maybe Russia, Iran. I, I mean, I'm just, you know, uh, you know, I mean, you know, just saying. When you, when you, well, I, I don't have time, but Ezekiel 38 and 39 prophesied of Russia, Iran, and I forget this, yeah, China. It, we are the generation that in the first time of history that those three nations have ever come together. Clock is ticking. This mixture of iron and clay shows that these kingdoms will try to strengthen themselves by forming alliances with each other through intermarriage. But they will not hold together just as iron and clay do not mix. Verse 44, during the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness, and it will stand forever. Now, it says during the reigns of those kings. What kings are those? I know it's those kings. But I want you to say, I want you to realize he did not say he's going to start a kingdom. He's just going to set it up. The kingdom didn't start in the midst of all of this. It was already there. Now God interjects it into the affairs of man. So when Jesus comes on the scene in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's inner. Did you get that? Did you get it? No. Did you get the timeline? Did you get the timeline? He says during the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom. When did he come and do that? 
Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness, and it will stand forever. So what I'm sharing with you is that kingdom has come. All these folks sitting here waiting on stuff, that kingdom has come. I, I know you said, well, Pastor, you said the kingdom is coming. I want you to just, 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 deal, just hang on. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness and it will stand forever. Verse 45, that is the meaning of the rock cut from the mountain. It was a rock cut from the mountain. It was a rock cut from the mountain. It was a rock cut from the mountain. I'm, I'm doing that for a reason. Though not by human hands, that rock crushed to pieces the statue of iron, Bronze, clay, silver, and gold. So all of those other kingdoms get crushed. The great God was showing the king what will happen in the... Okay, we looking back. He was looking forward. So he said the dream is true and its meaning is certain. So it's certain and it's true that the kingdom of God is coming and it's going to crush all other kingdoms. Why do I keep saying coming? Because there's still other kingdoms. And until all of them are crushed, all right, I got a few minutes. Not only is the kingdom of God coming, listen to this. The kingdom of God has personal consequences as well. The kingdom of God has personal consequences as well. See, there's a whole bunch of signs out here letting us know that this kingdom is coming because things are happening in other kingdoms. Other kingdoms are falling. Other alliances are being made. Uh, this is all an indication of what God was saying to Daniel. He's letting us know what a timeline is. He's letting us know that he's interjected the kingdom of God into the kingdom of this world. What's happening now is these other kingdoms are going to be crushed. It's a matter of time. But the kingdom of God has personal consequences as well. What do you mean? Well, very easily here. Luke chapter 20. <clears throat> Remember, it was a rock cut out from the mountain, except not with human hands. Luke chapter 20, verse 17, King James. Luke chapter 20, verse 17. And he beheld them and said, what is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. So Jesus is the stone that was rejected. I'm making sure we're getting this now. Jesus is the stone that was rejected. Look at Acts chapter 4, verse 11 and 12 in the New Living Translation. Just to let you know, I'm just not just saying this. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, the stone that you build is rejected has now become the cornerstone. Verse 12. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. So now notice, Jesus is the stone that was rejected, and he is the only pathway to salvation. Now I'm saying all of this because the kingdom of God has personal consequences as well. It's not just uh, nations and all of this that's being crushed. I want you to see something. Go back to Luke again. Chapter 20, verse 18 now. And we're re almost ready to close. Guess I will fence. Told you I ain't have much. Listen to this. And remember, it was a stone cut out from the mountain, but without human hands. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. If you go back to Daniel in chapter 2, literally when he said that the kingdoms would be like... Uh, 
uh, the threshing floor, that's the same grinding reference as here. Here's the thing. And, and I'm, verse 18, I'm, I'm, I'm going to quit with this. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. When you fall upon Christ, you're broken through repentance. That's when we fall upon him. But the kingdom of God has personal consequences as well. But on whomsoever it shall fall. If the stone falls on you, it's going to grind you to powder. It's going to, one reference says, grind you to nothingness. What am I saying? We are in the day and time where it's not just about what the na what's happening to the nations, it's what's happening to people. That if we reject this, if, if we fall upon the stone through repentance, yeah, we're going to be broken. You should be broken with repentance. Every one of us. We didn't come to Christ and stay like we were. We were broken before him. When we, felt, when we found out that we were sinners with no hope outside of Christ, we were broken. That brokenness led to our repentance. But what happens when now that stone that was cut out the mountain without human hands now falls on you because you rejected him? It's going to grind you into nothingness. And that's the place where we are where we have to understand either you're going to embrace the kingdom movement or you're going to be crushed by the kingdom movement. There is, see, the gentleness of Christ is through repentance. The wrath of God is through rejection. It has personal consequences for each and every one of us. That's why I believe the Lord has given us this year the theme, embracing the kingdom movement. Don't resist it. Don't fight it. Don't decide that you know better. Because then the stone is going to start crushing you. Because you're fighting against what God is doing. Saints, I don't understand what all of this is going, how it's all going to unfold. What I do know is his kingdom is coming. And until every kingdom is crushed under the kingdom of God, we're going to see some stuff happen. We're going to see some things that we've never seen before. But you're going to have to make up your mind right now on what side you're going to be on. Let, let me show you something. Go to Revelations 22 and 20. See, if that stone, you, you don't want the stone to fall upon you and the weight of God's glory. That, see, we, we've said, God, we want your glory. No you, no, you really don't. You don't understand that part of the cherubim's and the seraphim's job was to cover the glory of God because if it break out in our sinful nature, it'll destroy you. When, 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 remember, I was, we was going over the Lord's Prayer, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You got to understand what it's saying. You are holy. God's holiness will destroy us. We need a covering. Christ is our covering. Now, how, are some, how is somebody going to think they're going to stand up under the holiness of God and you're not covered? So, John, quick, quick context. John has just finished the unveiling of Jesus Christ. Listen to what I'm saying. John was not unveiling the Christ child. This was not the baby that was born in the manger, manger that he was trying to unveil to us. This was not the suffering servant who people slapped, spit on, uh, beat his back. I mean, understand what I'm saying. This is not him. This is the same Jesus. What I'm saying is now he's unveiling to us the Christ, the Christos, the King. So now with him unveiling this to us, We've not seen this before. 
We, we, we've not, all we've seen is the Jesus that was born like normal people are born in the sense of, you know, he, he was born of Mary. I, I, I know it was not Joseph that impregnated Mary. I understand he was born of a virgin. But people looked and said, well, he, he, he got a body like everybody else. You know, he, he grew up from, from a baby. And all. So, they, 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 you know, that was normal. So th this was the, yeah, they beat him. He bled. He bled. Jesus suffered pain. And to top it all off, he died. Something about his death, though, he got up. So, so, so what John is doing, Perry, let me reveal to you who got up. <laughs> See, you, you, you understand who died. You saw, a, in your mind, you saw a natural, everyday person die because people die. But let me unveil to you who got up. So John, after all of the discussion, after all of the revelation that he is, I mean, he don't pour it out everything. He don't gave every, he's some stuff I can't, I don't even know how to say this. I'm just saying it the best way I can. After all of this, John says, wait a minute. Now, I don't see something. I don't, now, now he, the man on the island by himself. Now, he, he's, he's on the island because of his testimony for Christ. But while, why, now see, see, Perry, he went there for one reason, or so he thought. But now, God begins to show him, watch this, the future. Here's another man that God can show the kingdom outside of time. So after seeing all of this, John said, wait a minute, I got one thing to say. He which testified these things, he said, I'm the one that's testifying about all of this. I'm the one that's saying everything I've said is absolutely true. All I can say, watch this. I'm sorry, Jesus was saying, he, he, so he was testifying to these things, saying, surely I come quickly. So Jesus is testifying about himself. So John says, amen, I witness to that. So be it. But John says, I got one more thing. And one more thing I want to add. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Listen to what he is saying. John is saying, I see all of this. I see the kingdom coming, and I see the king. What am I saying? Some of us get caught up in our own life. We have things going on. We ain't, well, you know, I, I ain't, you know, I, I, we ain't, Jesus ain't going to come back right now. You know, maybe, you know. After I get a few things, you know, after I, I do, you know, down, I, 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 after you get a couple things taken care of, you know, I, I mean, you know, you, I ain't been to Hawaii yet, down, you know, you, you know, I, I mean, after all, you know, you, you want to, you want your whole career in front of you, Shaquem, you know, all, all of the things you want to do. And see, sometimes we get caught up in the us and we, 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 we begin to think that, you know, maybe this is a little bit more important than the kingdom. May, maybe what I desire need to, need to you know, I, I mean, come on, I don't heard some people say, well, you know, I'm, I'm getting married in six months. I mean, Lord, I want you to come, but, you know, can it be after them six months? You know, God, I, I'm, I'm, I'm about to pay off my house. Can you, can you let me pay it off? See, we, we, we get caught up in, in, in this right here and all of this stuff around us. But John said, wait, 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 wait a minute. I don't see some stuff. I don't see some stuff that I can't even articulate. And the only thing I can say, see, when, you have a, when, when you've embraced the kingdom movement, your words are even so. I don't care what else is going on. Even so. I, 
Promotion? I don't care. Even so. They're going to buy the house? I don't care. Even so. See, we need some even so saints. Some even so no matter what else. No, I, I can't even so. You, that, them custom made suits that they've been working on for you. Even so. You ain't get to wear all of them, Ken. Even so. Lord, if I could just get three more before you go. Even so. See, we, got to, we, got, we need some even so come. Why don't we hear people talking about the kingdom coming anymore? Why are we so wrapped up into what's going on here? You know what? It's hard to look up for your redemption draw if not when you caught up in all of what's happening right here. I don't want to be caught up in all of this. Oh yeah, I, well, well you know I, I got you know I got this 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 opportunity that's come and this boy I'm going uh, even so. Let me let me let me share something with you. Let me share something with you. Check your heart. What is it that stops you from saying, even so, come, Lord Jesus? What is it that you, you, Lord, uh uh-huh. See, it shouldn't be anything. Not when you've embraced the kingdom movement. That's what we want to do this year. Sure, I want all, uh, Lord, I want to be completely out of debt. I don't want to owe nobody anything but love. But even so. Come, Lord Jesus. See, I want my heart. That I'm, I'm saying, Lord, my heart. There's no, see, John, there's something that John had after he saw all of this. Okay, let me, let, me, let me bring it, Dr. Hall. Let me bring it where we can understand. Why wasn't he praying? Okay, he's just seen Jesus in his glory. Okay, Lord, I, I just need you to get me off this island. He's on an island with no trees. He's been banished. He is appearing before the king of kings. Do you realize John wasn't even concerned about his situation? See, I, I, that's the kind, I, I need that. I need to be so lost in God that my situation don't even matter. He ain't asking for no deliverance. He ain't asking, John, even so, come, come Lord Jesus, come Lord he could have been, go get the Romans, go get every one of them. None of that. See, sometimes I think my prayers, your prayers, our prayers are not focused the way they should be. It's the wrong request. We're asking for the wrong thing. What we really want is Jesus and his kingdom to come. This year, I'm asking that the Lord will allow me to embrace the kingdom movement. I ain't just trying to learn about it. I want to embrace it. I, I want to hold on to it. I want, I want to wrap my life into it. That nothing, I don't get, see, load, see, see, here's the real thing, Perry. Load you down with everything. Bless you every way you could be blessed. And you still stand in that say, even so. Come, Lord Jesus. A heart that's that pure that all of this stuff don't matter. Where you can honestly be willing to walk away from. See, that's people, that's a person who's embraced the kingdom movement. Because, the, see, the kingdom is not standing still. It is continually, progressively moving. And we don't want to be the ones that's crushed by it because we stop moving in the things of God. Every head bow, eyes are closed. We're going to embrace the kingdom movement this year. But like I said, I believe it has personal consequences, you all. I know the talking about stepping into a place where you're willing to lay aside everything for the sake of the kingdom 
is scary because it's not always taught to us like that. We're taught to go get ours, to do this and do I understand that. And I think there is a place. But I would prefer God to perfect my heart where first and foremost, nothing else is more important than his return and his kingdom being established in my own personal life. Sometimes we just want the kingdom to come, but we want it to come out there. We don't want it to come in us. But notice he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Guess what we're made out of, you all? Or in the earth. We're made out of earth. Why can't his kingdom come and his will be done in us? I believe God wants his kingdom to be made manifest in us. In order to do so, we must embrace the kingdom movement. While every head is bowed and eyes are closed, I don't know where you are in your life. I, don't, I believe God's challenging each and every one of us, though. And I know that it's, it's just that, a challenge. Well, Lord, what is this going to turn out? How is this going to be? What, what's going to happen? And some of us are very comfortable now. We've made some strides. And you say, well, what, what's going to happen now? I worked hard to get here. Yeah, I understand that. Nobody's telling you that you got to stop. I don't know what God is saying to you individually. But I know he's saying to all of us corporately that his kingdom is coming. And listen to this. Every other kingdom is going to be smashed. Are you setting up another one? So if you're not for his, he's going to smash what you said not. And why go through that? Why suffer that loss? When you could devote everything to him and be rewarded for it. While every head is bowed, eyes are closed. First off, I just want to speak to those, and you realize that God's saying, there's some, he's speaking some things to you about maybe some kingdoms that you were erecting. Boy, mm. God, I thank you. I just thought about Nimrod and how he was building. Wow. You know, sometimes we can think we're doing the right thing, and it's really the wrong thing. And one of the ways that we realize it is God speaks in that still, small voice. And he just kind of nudge us. And let us know that ain't, that ain't what I want. That's what you want. He says, is that my kingdom? Or is that your kingdom? He said, if it's your kingdom, you know how it's going to end. You know, here's the funny thing. Do you know God has made us kings and priests? Now watch this. It must mean that we're going to get kingdoms. So are we trying to get what we're going to get before time? It's not that you're not going to have it. Are you trying to get it before it's time? I don't want my kingdom until it's time. Let the king give me my kingdom. People may say, well, why aren't you doing this? Why? No, let the king give me my kingdom. I want you this year to focus in on embracing the kingdom movement. Not resisting it, not fighting it, not working against it, but in every area of your life. Married couples, are you going to embrace the kingdom movement in your marriage? Whatever it takes for the kingdom to be made manifest. No longer tearing each other down because in the kingdom, there's only one who accused the brethren. That was the enemy, and he got kicked out. So I don't want to be like the accuser of the brethren in my relationship. I don't want to be accusing my wife before God. I don't, we shouldn't be accusing our spouses before God because that's just like the enemy. See, no, the kingdom needs to come. In the kingdom, everybody's edified. 
everybody's comforted, everybody's built up in the kingdom. See, that's the kingdom movement. That's us embracing it. Even knowing that it may look like you lose it. It may look like you got to go down, but you know what? That's the way you go up in the kingdom. See, if we would just submit like John and said, even so. I don't care what my situation is. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Be king in this area. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Come right here. I know I need you. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Every area of my life, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Yes, I know I was the one attacking. I know I was the one that was bitter and angry. And I, Even so, come, Lord Jesus. See, because now I'm, I'm embracing the kingdom movement. Now I'm not fighting to get my way. Now I'm not fighting to say I was right. I'm not fighting to say it was all about me. Now I'm not being selfish. Because I'm saying even so, come Lord Jesus. Asking you to have your way. As messed up and as jacked up as I am, even so, come Lord Jesus. I may be on this island by myself. Even so, come Lord Jesus. May look like it ain't going to ever get no better for me, but even so, come Lord Jesus. See, that's the attitude of somebody who's embracing the kingdom movement. And I believe that that's what God is asking of us as a people, to embrace the kingdom movement. Not some other movement, not something else that's going on, but his movement, because in the end, the only thing that's going to last is the kingdom of God. Heavenly Father, I pray for those that are under the sound of my voice now. Lord, I believe you've spoken to our hearts the, ne the, the, the necessity of embracing the kingdom movement. I pray, Father, that we would be open now with your dealings with our hearts. Holy Spirit, you bear witness to the truth. If there's anyone here today and you say, well, Pastor, I see I need to surrender in my life. I've, it's been my way. I'm not sure how this is going to work out. To be honest, Pastor, I'm a little nervous. But I am willing, like John, to say even so. That's just you. I want you to just raise your hand as an indication of where you are. It's just you and God. It ain't about nobody else. I see those hands. That's what you all, it's, it's, it's just us. It's just us and God. It's not like he don't know. It's not like he's shocked. But this is your surrender. This is you saying, Lord, I, this is me. I ain't blaming nobody else. I ain't fixating on what somebody else did. I'm saying, even so, come Lord Jesus. I know I have, des I have desires, I have ambitions, things I want to do. But Lord, I'm putting that aside. I don't want to be crushed. I'd rather be broken than to be crushed. Because that's where we are. Saints, I realize it too. I raised my hand. I don't have a problem. You can look at me funny if you want to. I'd rather be broken than be crushed. Lord Jesus, I pray even those of us that are raising our hands. Lord, there's a sign of surrender to you. A sign of surrendering ourselves. Lord, the things that we were putting before you, the things that were causing us to resist your kingdom movement, the things that was in our heart that we chose to hold on to even when you nudged us and said, let go. Even when you told us that's not me, we still held on to it because it was what we wanted. Now, Lord, we come before you falling on the rock to be broken, to be broken before you. Lord, break off of us everything that's not like you. 
Lord, when it came time to share the bread of life, <laughs> you said, this is my body broken for you. Lord, you know what it's like to be broken. It's not new to you. Help us through this process of being broken. Lord, we repent of being selfish. We repent of building our own instead of building yours. Lord, we repent of not wisely using all the resources that you've access, given us access to. Lord, may every gift that we possess be used for your kingdom and your kingdom alone. I pray, Father, that from this moment forward, we would embrace the kingdom movement and no longer resist it or fight against it in any form or fashion. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, the funny thing to me is I look back, like I said, you know, I see us moving forward, us pursuing the kingdom agenda, and now us embracing the kingdom movement. I don't know how this is going to pan out this year in the sense of what, it, what it's all going to look like. I do know God's going to dig deep. He's going to dig deep in every one of us. You won't run this year. You won't be able to hide this year. Because what he's doing, this is love. This is what love really looks like. When God takes time to fix us, he doesn't have to, you all. He could have let us just go on down the road that we were on and stumble into eternal damnation. But he saw fit of his own mercy and his own grace. To save a wretch like us. And now that's why I don't, I don't want, you know, when Gamaliel was talking to the, uh, his court or what have you, after they had beaten the apostles and stuff, he says, lest happily we be found fighting against God. See, sometimes we don't understand we're fighting against God because we're trying to take this world stuff and put it in the kingdom. He's saying, I'm going to crush every other kingdom. If you're bringing that stuff here, I'm crushing it. He's letting you know that. But if you do it his way, your whole life is simply saying, even so, come Lord Jesus. I can't promise you everything's going to turn out just the way you want it, but I can promise you this, that if we hang on in the end, it's going to be better than what you expected. And that's what I'm holding on to. Not this stuff. To me, everything here is just not, it's fake now. Everything. We can't find nothing that's real. You can't even get a burger that's real no more. <laughs> stuff is fake. It's fake. I mean, if we've got to get to the place where God, we need you. And we really want him to come. Who we I mean, I'm finished. I'm finished. Because I, I, I keep going on. Because my heart is pleading. I don't, I, I, there's things I like in life. Don't get me wrong. You can keep liking stuff, y'all. Don't, this, this ain't mean that you can't, I don't, you can't get ice cream no more. That ain't what it is. But you know what? I want him to come more than I want ice cream. I do. feel like I've had a good life. If it came right now, even so, come Lord Jesus. I'm done.